Welcome to Generating Demand Real Stories from the B2B Trenches, where we tell you our secrets, like how to establish thought leadership, or rock your webinar registrations, and tips and tricks to drive sales-ready leads. Lean in, listen, and learn. We've got you covered. This podcast is brought to you by Virtual Intelligence Briefing. Hi, and welcome to another episode of Generating Demand, Stories from the B2B Trenches. My name is Amanda McGuckin-Hager. I'm here with my guest today, KP Peck. Hello, KP. Hey, Amanda. Super excited to be here. I'm so glad you can join us today. Um, Everyone, KP is a director at Propeller. They are a consulting firm. You're out of the San Francisco office, as I understand it. Exactly. And uh, Propeller is a consulting firm working with strategy and execution across all of those hot companies out there in the San Francisco Bay Area. Yep, indeed. (laughs) Nice. Well, uh, I'm excited that you're here today, KP. Your story is a little bit different than some of the other stories I've had, but I love it. I am excited to share it. So you are going about generating demand as a director in this company. And in the past, your past career, you've served at marketing roles at big name brands like Cliff, Cliff Bars and SC Johnson. Those are not small companies by any means. That's right. Um, So, and I imagine that you bring those experiences to where you are today. And then you also bring something else that not a lot of leaders Maybe not a lot of leaders do yet. And I'm going to say yet because we do hope that this catches on um, and becomes more prevalent. I think the world will be a better place for it. Absolutely. So tell us a little bit. You're going about generating demand in uh, in business through sales and business development at Propeller. Yeah. Tell me a little bit more. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll take one quick step back because it might help kind of lay the groundwork for the present. You know, coming out of college and stepping into the workforce for the first time, I was not one of those people that knew exactly what they wanted to do. You know, it took me a lot of time. I don't know, but I want to know them. (laughs) And can they invent time travel for me? But it took some trial and error for me to kind of find what what's my path, what's KP's path. And so part of that trial and error included at Cliff actually included this entry level sales role um, where I got to call on these key accounts in a given territory, um, kind of, you know, exactly what you would expect in an entry level sales sales role and working to expand the footprint for Cliff Bar. And from that you know my career path actually shifted from sales into project and program management um, in marketing so cross integrated marketing and then also into brand marketing and eventually technology as well but it kind of gave me a full spectrum um picture if you will of business and then into yeah i was gonna say i tend to think that some of the best marketers have a sales background it, I think you, it's like two wings of a bird. Yeah. And having that perspective just adds so much value to the marketing work. Yeah, exactly. And so that then, you know, I propelled, ooh, that was a no pun intended <laughs> moment that I propelled. <laughs> we'll get, I'll regret that later, but I did propel <laughs> into consulting at a firm called Propeller. Um, you know, the people skills that I learned even going back to that sales role, um, Mm -hmm. which I don't want to age myself, but was many, 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 many years ago, (laughs) have been really important along um, the way. And so at the end of the day, you know, all of my roles have required one thing in common, which is working with people and Mm -hmm. helping them solve problems. And so right now in my current role as as a director in Propeller's San Francisco office, we've got we've got four offices, but um, in San Francisco's office, a huge portion of my job scope does include revenue responsibilities. And that, of course, mm-hmm. to your point, um, means securing demand and building mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, both I'm sure inbound and outbound, I'm sure generating demand and leads <laughs> and prospects and customers and growing customer accounts all fall within your, your bailiwick, if you will. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, I think, uh, just in reflecting on on meeting with you today, 
you know, I really shifted into more of a development role. I was doing some of it prior, but more of a, a business development and that creating that demand mm -hmm. right as the pandemic was taking force. And so if we mm -hmm. think back, golly, right, what's now over a year and a half ago, when we think back, there was this necessarily this extra focus on on revenue, yes, and also on keeping the firm intact, um, mm -hmm. just like so many of our clients, so many um, people in marketing and sales. Um, you know, I think while the pandemic was and really still is, um, we are still in it, this unfortunate crisis, to say the least. Yeah. What I've appreciated is this this challenge to to leverage my network and relationships that I've built over the course of my career to date and use that to work to identify new clients, new projects for our consultants. How can I increase demand? How can I creatively um, approach all of that? Mm -hmm. And for me, the way that I've done that is, you know, um, I'll, I'll call it three prongs, if you will. So yeah. the, relation the relationships themselves, the integrity of the work that I've done to date, and then kind of as you hinted at at the at the top of the podcast when you introduced me outside of work i've <clears throat> excuse me i've cultivated a mindfulness practice for over a dozen years and i really do infuse that uh into the first two prongs as i approach anything business related and that includes building demand yeah so this is um you know a lot of what when i think of generating demand i think of marketing machines right we have automation and we have all these ai you know coming to market and we have these systems and processes and best practices and data flow and it's all very mechanical um but it's so refreshing to speak with you to remind us all that actually generating demand is about people and it's about those relationships and cultivating those relationships yeah, exactly. <clears throat> Sorry for losing my voice there for a second. You know, I think that every time we meet someone, and this sounds a little cliche, but I genuinely believe it. Every time we meet someone, we have an opportunity to create this this little uh, little memory, I guess, in their brain mm -hmm. um, that they can reflect back on. And so, you know, one example of that is right when the pandemic was taking hold, um, probably in, this was in April, I think of 2020, I had out of nowhere, I did not seek this out. I had three different former colleagues of mine, um, two from one place of work, one from another place of work, reach out and say, KP, we really need support. You know, can you come or can someone at Propeller come? And, and that I like to think is, hey, I worked with those people. Um, I showed up with integrity and I've nurtured those relationships over 15, 20. Now I did age myself 15 or 20 <laughs> years um, to, to the point where if they need support for their work and how they generate demand and how they generate revenue, um, they know that they can come to me. And and those reach outs did leave, lead in turn to uh, revenue for for propeller. Um, you know, and I think that it doesn't need to just be former colleagues. I think that we can, if we do it skillfully, you know, connect with people that, you know, with whom we have no work context, you know, that's not part of the relationship. But, you know, another example that comes to mind right now, Amanda, is one of my closest friends. His partner is, uh, you know, on the C-suite, actually in marketing, a CMO at a very large company. Mm -hmm. um, and And... It's just, you know, kind of incorporating into conversation when it's appropriate, uh, you know, just as a reminder, how, you know, I'm at Propeller here. Here's what we're up to. What are you up to? Um, and if you ever need consulting, let's have a conversation. And in that particular conversation, you know, what happened was that she led me to someone um, who at the time was working with her, but who mm -hmm. then left a couple months later. And over the course of eight months of, of uh, you know, patience and persistence and balancing mm -hmm. those as, as, as equally as I possibly can, right? Um, cultivating that relationship and building that relationship. And what happened is that has since for Propeller become a, a very key client for our Silicon Valley office that has continued to grow and grow over the last, what's now been a year. And so- Which is amazing. Think, yeah, yeah. 
it's amazing. I mean, you think about all the people that you have in life just through random experiences, right? Or outside of work, friends, college, uh, neighborhoods, uh, you know, interest groups, um, kids, what, whatever you might have in your life and those people in it and how they may end up coming back around. You don't know, but like mm -hmm. you said, with patience and integrity, if you're, mm -hmm. and back to that mindfulness, if you're operating in the moment and you are doing so with integrity, they will most likely remember you and come back around when the time is right. And then, and the need is there. Uh, is that right? Is that fair? Yeah, I think you nailed it. And something else that comes to mind as you're as you're reflecting that back is, you know, you know there is power in marketing. And something as sim as simple as you know, being in San Francisco, we all all wear our Patagonia vests or Patagonia puffies. <laughs> I'm and I I do it too. Not today, it's warm, <laughs> but I, I I I do that. You know, something as simple as the brand logo on that Patagonia or whatever it is. Um, can go a long way if you think about it. You know, you can use that as a conversation. Someone says, oh, what's, what's for example, Propeller? I've never heard of that. And then having that conversation and how you approach that, again, to, to kind of reflect that we're reflecting back and forth, I think, right now. <laughs> but um, with, with mindfulness, the reason I bring up mindfulness there is because I think having the ability to recognize those, mo be super present and recognize mm -hmm. those moment moments and pivot to create opportunities for conversations that then create over time um, what becomes demand mm -hmm. is is something we sometimes forget about, but there's a lot of power behind that. And it's it's really more the the long game, right? That's not an overnight thing. Yeah, it is the long game. But when but... that long game leads to millions of dollars in revenue, you yeah. look back and appreciate that moment. Yeah. And so if, you know, for our listeners, if they're in a business development role or if they're in a sales role, um, mm -hmm. their the power of their network could be so beneficial to them. And networks don't just happen, right? They're built over time, person mm -hmm. by person, connection by connection. Mm -hmm. And then, like you said, you never know when or where those connections will come from. Mm -hmm. um, and then if you're in a marketing role, I would just like to say that you know, this applies too to your own career, your career path and your career growth. While you might not be on a variable compensation, you know, mm -hmm. and looking to drive and close sales on your own, but the career path that comes from knowing your network and growing your network and building your network and cultivating your network and nurturing your network and all of those things can be so insanely powerful. Oh, absolutely. And with marketing, so much of marketing involves partnerships, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. one brand partnering with another brand um, or an event space or whatever it is mm -hmm. and being able to build over time relationships and have that network can be very potent when it comes to forging partnerships that can really benefit both companies. Yeah, I think... Uh my mom is in real estate and she used to say, it's not what you know, it's who, you know, it's, I and mean, <laughs> there's some truth to that. I mean, you should know what you know, right? It's not, you should know things as well, but right. you should know people as well. Yeah. It can go a long way for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, tell me a little bit more about the mindfulness practice. Yeah. That's something that I stumbled into uh, about a dozen years ago and for really for that entire duration, I have a daily, what I call sitting practice. Um, mm -hmm. And and usually I am doing it sitting. So there you go. But, um, you know, I think that I think that there's this conception that you need to sit for or meditate, do mindfulness practice for 30 minutes or an hour or all day, every day. <laughs> and I, you know, that's not what I believe. I think that there's power in before going into a key sales meeting, um, mm -hmm. sitting, if you're, you know, driving to it, you know, sitting in the car for 60 seconds and just finding the breath, anchoring, being present with what's here right now, and then going into that meeting. That one mm -hmm. minute can really allow, it can allow the body to settle and it can allow the mind to be really focused on right now, this is what's happening what mm -hmm. what the conversation that i had with my partner earlier this morning that's not here right now 
where I need to go shopping for groceries and what I'm making for dinner. And is a Friday night lights, go Texas, is a Friday night <laughs> lights to rerun also the best show ever, which hopefully we'll agree upon, um, on later tonight. That's not present right now. What's present is I've got my breath. I can feel my feet on the ground. And now this sales meeting, which is for a key account, that's what's happening right now. That's and my so, focus right now. That's my focus right now. Yeah. yeah. And so that's something that I just infuse, whether it's a new business, you know, development type client meeting, um, whether it's people who report to me, making sure that I'm present for that because they're going out and they're by the virtue of doing good work, they're generating demand. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. You know, it's, it's important any way I look at it. Yeah. I dabbled a little bit in meditation and mindfulness myself and picked up the, the saying, I don't know if you've heard this, I'm sure you have. Um, if you don't have five minutes to sit, then you sit for an hour. Nailed it. Absolutely. Right. Right. <laughs> like, totally. I mean, like you, you can find those five minutes and just minutes. do a little, you know, breathing and, and mindfulness practice right there. Totally. Um, it's accessible to everyone. I know that some studies have shown I'm not a scientist by any means, um, and I'm sure the science is out there. Um, but I have read that uh, mindfulness grows our grain matter, our mm -hmm. gray matter in our brain. And I have also read that drinking reduces that grain matter. <laughs> so <laughs> Not I'll noted. Just, <laughs> I'll just say if you are planning on having a drink, maybe balance that with some with some meditation. mindfulness. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I, um, you know, am I putting words in your mouth prior to talking? I picked up uh, prior to recording, I should say, I picked up something in your, uh, in our conversation about, um, that mindfulness and that present and that integrity in your work of communicating what you are planning on doing and following up with what you are planning on doing or, you know, with the effort, mm -hmm. you know, I have completed this or, or so mm -hmm. on. Um, and just how that, uh, that simple act can go so far into building that integrity with your stakeholders, be them internal or external. Yeah. I think it builds trust. Mm -hmm. I think that when people know they can count on you, uh, not just once, but repeated over time, over months, over years, you know, then you get those, those unsolicited reach outs from a former colleague saying, Hey, I'd love to bring a, team of propeller consultants on on board to to do this engagement can we talk um i think it also for me i'll speak for myself of course um for me it builds my own trust in myself so if mm -hmm. i am working with integrity um and if i'm being as present as i can and we're all human i am not present all the time and very few i mean i don't think anyone is right. um, but if, if I'm doing that to the best of my ability and giving it my best shot, then I build my, my self-trust over time. And that makes me more confident. It mm -hmm. makes me feel that I can have uh, more elevated conversations when it comes to business development, when it comes to seeking out that demand, when it comes to being creative in how I seek that, you know, to build that demand. Um, so I think it works both ways. It's internal building that trust, that integrity for, for self. And mm -hmm. then of course the tentacles of, of how that helps in our relationships, um, outside of work. Sure. But, but in a work context, because you get the repeat business, you get the mm -hmm. client coming back. Um, you get that marketing par partnership that happens over time. It's a mm -hmm. slow, a slow reveal or a slow unfold, if you will. But I think yeah. there's a lot of power behind it. Absolutely. I'm, I'm thrilled to have you here and sharing this because so much of what we talk about or so much of maybe what I see in the market are best practices and skill sets and really, again, back to those mechanics, but rarely do we talk about our actual personal behavior and our personal approach and what impact that may have on our business objectives. Right. Um, and it's not something to overlook, right? It's, yeah. um, it's a critical part of that. So I'm so glad you could be here today. Yeah, no, thanks. This has been awesome. Yeah, I've loved having you. So we're at the point in our story where we share resources. And so 
uh, KP, you've been at this for a while. You've you've uh, grown up, if you will, in your career <laughs> and and others that might just be starting out or maybe transitioning yeah. from other lines of work into a similar into a similar position. Um, you know, we're always looking for shared resources, things that may have benefited you could certainly help uh, benefit someone else down the road. Yeah. So I'd love to know what what do you have any resources to share? Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to share two. And I think because we brought in that that mindfulness uh, theme to our, yeah. our conversation today, I'm going to I'm going to kind of hone in on, on two resources that are both work related, um, but mindfulness related that have been very valuable for me and uh, that have become part of my toolbox every single day. Awesome. So, yeah. So the first one is a book. Um, it's a book by Mark Lesser, and it's called The Seven Practices of Mindful Leaders. And so much of what we do when we are uh, creating demand, when we're seeking to, to increase revenue, and it is leadership. Mm -hmm. And doing that through mindfulness um, can be, you know, it kind of spe speaks to everything that we've talked about to date. And what I like about the book, it's a pretty short book. Uh, it, it really does have seven practices, just as it says in the title, no tricks there. Um, but it's something where, you know, you can read that over seven weeks and choose one of the, the practices per week um, and kind of see how, you know, experiment, have fun with it. How can you apply that uh, in, in your work life? And then the second one is that, you know, earlier this year, in part because of the pandemic and we're working remotely and you know, so many pros and cons, but one pro perhaps as um, in working remotely, I was able to take this neuroscience of leadership course through a university in Australia, That's which awesome. as an aside, they were there bright and early, you know, with coffee in the morning <laughs> and I was ready for dinner. But um, that's, an, <laughs> that's an aside. We all teased each. I was the only person not from Australia in the in the course. But um, that's so awesome. we, all had, we all had some fun with that one. But it was it was led by uh, a woman named Kristen Hansen. Okay. And she she also has a great book. It's called Traction. Traction, the neuroscience of leadership and performance. Nice. And, you know, I, I say this because there's so much as leaders in sales, as leaders in marketing, that we can leverage when it comes to the brain's functions. And, you know, if you think about it, ooh, that's two puns, two no puns intended in one, in one <laughs> podcast. But if you, if you think about, also unplanned, if you think about it, when we tap into neuroscience, it can really create this shift for us from, from siloed leaders into this, you know, I think it's called whole person leaders. Mm -hmm. And what that does is, is it unlocks our capacity to lead with transparency or in integrity, as we were talking mm -hmm. about a few minutes ago, mm -hmm. empathy, meaning. And then when we tap into that whole person style of leadership, um, which is something I try to do, I think that what we ultimately do is we build stronger relationships. And that really, as we've talked about, leads to increased opportunity for sales, increased opportunity for marketing partnerships, mm -hmm. whatever, you know, for hiring, especially for, in the B2B. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there are, the application of that is huge, right? Investors, um, we Absolutely. could go on and on, on, you know, business development relationships, partnerships and on. Um, yeah, it's pretty infinite. Yeah. Well, I love it. I love it. I, um, I'm going to check out these books. Uh, well, at least uh, the seven practices. I love a good, easy read. And it sounds like it's a short, quick, easy read. Sure. And I promise. I love that you said, yeah. you know, play with it. Try it on. Like, try it try on it for on. size. See yeah. where you can apply it, you know, just yeah. have fun with it. Um, yeah, exactly. Which sounds really accessible for me. Very cool. easy to try. <laughs> and um, I also love the neuroscience of leadership. So I, I do want to check out that traction yeah. book as well. So thank yeah. you. Thank you for Absolutely. sharing those. Yeah. Thanks for having me, Amanda. It's been so awesome. Thanks for joining <laughs> today. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Take care. All right. You too. Bye, Amanda. Bye. If you have any questions, want to suggest topics, or have ideas for guest speakers, drop us a line at podcast at virtualintelligencebriefing.com. To learn more of our demand generation secrets, visit vibriefing.news or grab the link in our show notes.